So hello there folks, Ian Forrest here for mobiledjnews.co.uk and something very exciting has just arrived at my door. And that device would be the brand new Newmark NS6. MIDI controller, 4 channel with Serato itch. Now I'm itching to get inside the box so let's have a look. Okay, so here it is. Here's what you find um, inside the box. You get a nice little uh, packet of stuff there. There's the CD, some cables, and a uh, Velcro strip. We'll uh, find out what that's all about a little bit later on. So here it is. Let's, uh, uh, I've not been inside this yet, so this is as exciting for me as it is for you. Okay, maybe I had a sneak peek. Now then, look at that. Wow. Look at those big, shiny platters. First touch, very smooth. In fact, they feel, if I'm being honest, a lot nicer than the uh, Pioneer DDJ S1 platters. Four channel mixer, all the, uh, the itch controls, effects. Uh, the legendary Newmark strip search, not literally, we'll find out what that's all about later. And this is interesting, a pitch fader on the left on this deck, and on the other side it's on the right. It's got a really nice solid feel to it, that should be quite interesting, um, getting used to that. Just going back to the middle, the... Uh, the faders, they're not full length, but that's not a big problem, and they're quite easy to push, which is, you know, pretty much similar to most of the new Mark range of mixers. I used to have a CM200 um, USB, and that was really easy, whereas the Denon MC6000 that I've got at the minute is, uh, well, the faders are very stiff, very, very stiff. So I'll look on the front panel here, uh, you've got your cross fader curve. Sorry about it not focusing there, I'm doing this on my iPhone. And you've got the headphone, split cue, and stuff. Uh, you've got some uh, headphone jacks there and a mini headphone jack. Let's uh, pick this unit up. I'm just going to put the phone down for a minute. I'm going to try not to drop it, folks. Okay. Back of the unit, there's the uh, the new Mark logo moving across channel three inputs, channel one, channel two, channel four, booth outputs, master, a balanced output, USB socket, and of course the 12 volt DC power jack. So there it is. These um, this blueness on the platters is removable, as you can see. It's a nice tab there, but so I won't remove that just yet. So then, let's uh, get this connected up. It's the, uh, the morning after the night before, um, I used the, the uh, Newmark NS6 last night. First impressions, very very nice piece of kit I've got to say, really really nice piece of kit. Um, just a few minor issues, but we'll start off with some positives. The, the platters are amazing, really really nice platters, a joy to use, 
easy to cue with, really smooth, nice to touch, um, really cool, really enjoyed using them. Um, the effects built into itch are really good, the way the NS6 presents them with a slider as opposed to a dial, uh, it kind of suits how I work a little bit more, um, so I really liked the, uh, the faders instead of the knobs. Um, just a couple of issues now. Um, I feel that Newmark have failed big time with this product in that they market it as a four deck mixer um, and they've not thought about microphones at all. Yes you can plug microphones in but they occupy channels three and four um, which is you know which is fine but uh, if you were playing a, a track on deck three uh, you had a track lined up ready to play on deck four you do it just about to do a mix and you needed to do a quick announcement in between um, basically you're stuffed because if you change the input from the track that you're playing to the microphone the track just stops altogether um, and it's just not good enough um, I just think that's that's not a very good thing. I mean, I, I, I kind of feel that this product is maybe aimed at club DJs who maybe don't don't need to use a microphone, but this product really appeals to mobile DJs as well, and I think a lot of mobile the mobile DJs will find this a bit of a problem. Um, one other issue is that if you are going to use it in a mobile DJ environment, you know, four decks might not be for everyone, so um, it'd be nice if you could actually turn. Uh, decks three and four off, um, i.e., in the software, because uh, if you don't use them, they're on screen all the time, and they take up a, a good inch and a half uh, of your screen real estate. So if you use a a small laptop such as a uh, a 13 inch MacBook like I do, having those decks there really takes up a lot of um, screen, you know, um, display. So it'd be nice if we could actually turn that off. I think that's more of a Serato issue rather than a Newmark problem, but it's something that I think needs to be addressed. Um, we did have a slight problem um, in that if you wave your hand very closely to the platter but don't actually touch it, um, the music can stop and jump. Um, it's weird how it works or how it doesn't work because I couldn't recreate the problem. Um, it just happened. I tried it again. It happened again, um, and then when I tried to do it again later in the night, it just wouldn't do it. No matter how close I got my hand, so uh, not quite sure what the problem is there. Um, what were the other things? The oh yes, uh, we had another problem with itch. Um, we couldn't make the the column that shows the artist in the library uh, wider. So it was about on screen it was about two centimeters wide and we just couldn't see the name of the artist it wouldn't shift at all it wouldn't resize it wouldn't make it make bigger um, it was really really difficult to use and um, when you're browsing the library if you use the uh, the browsing feature built into itch because you've got that extra deck it really takes up a lot of screen estate so I mean you're, you're left with maybe you know physically maybe three three inches at most on screen uh, for you to navigate through your library and it doesn't really give you a lot of room. Uh, but just getting back to the new mark for a minute, um, it's it's an amazing piece of kit, it's really really nice. Um, I felt that the the audio output was just a little bit different to what I'm used to. On the on the MC6000 uh, and also on the DDJ units from Pioneer, um, the output is really quite bassy, you do get a lot of bass out of it, whereas with the new mark you had to whack the bass right up to somewhere like three o'clock on the dial uh, for it to even, you know, maybe it was maybe it was the the room I was in. I don't know, but from past experience with Newmark gear, the the EQ is, works in a really weird way in that you've really got to dial the EQ right in before it starts making a difference. Uh, I found that on my CM two hundred mixer, uh, and I'm finding it again, uh, bizarrely on the NS six, but. You know, it's. Uh, I'm sure it's something that can be addressed maybe with a firmware update. Uh, apart from that, love it to bits. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, 
you know, a few misgivings, obviously, with the with the microphone inputs. Um, but apart from that, really, really enjoyed using it. Um, oh yeah, there was one other thing. The the hot cues that are underneath the platter are very, very close to the cue play and pause buttons. Um, I did find myself um, pressing the Q and sync buttons even um, whilst I was jabbing the hot cues whilst doing a mix which puts you off a little bit um, it's a bit annoying um, so I think you know that's maybe something to address in maybe a future version maybe you move the hot cues far away from the, the play and pause buttons move essential buttons away from other essential buttons um, you know just to just to stop things like that happening um, and also, uh, I took a, a DJ friend with me last night to roadie for me, and uh, I had to go off to the little boy's room at one point, and I left him using the kit. Now, he's he's not into DJ, he is into DJ kit, but he doesn't, you know, he panics a little bit when he's using new stuff, and he really, really enjoyed using it. Uh, when I came back, he did remark to me that um, he couldn't work out how to cue stuff, like listen to the next track in your cans before you play it and when it's dark you can't see if you didn't know they were there then you know you can't see the Q button the little round button with the headphones on above uh, on each channel you can't see it it's not lit up it's it's not anything if you didn't know it was there and it was dark he couldn't work it out he really really couldn't work it out when I pressed the button and obviously it, it lit up he was amazed. He didn't even know that button was there. So I don't know if it's something that can maybe be looked at in uh, in a firmware upgrade or something. Maybe have the, the, the background of that button white uh, or dim or something like that. And then when you press it, it turns red just so, um, just so you can um, see it. And just one mind, just one other thing. I'm thinking of loads of things as we go along here. Uh, the effects. Now I don't know whether it's because I didn't understand exactly how it all worked, but I couldn't assign um, the same effect across multiple channels. So if I was doing a mix and I wanted um, a a low pass filter on channel th uh, on deck A, and I wanted the same low pass filter on deck B. Uh, it was really. It wouldn't let me do that. It was either. It was either on channel A. It was either on deck A. It was either on deck B. And every time I selected the other one, it would cancel it out on the other. Uh, what you have to do is because you've got two effects banks built into which you had to set the low pass filter on on FX deck B uh, or FX two, uh, and then use it from that. But then if you wanted to introduce a bit of flanger or something like that, then you just couldn't. It was impossible. Um, I'm used to in Tractor being able to chain effects together like flanger and high pass, low pass filters, that sort of thing. Uh, and it, you just couldn't do it, it was impossible. Uh, it's either one effect or the other. But I think that, I think, you know, that's a minor thing. But, you know, some, not every mobile DJ will probably want to do that. But it's, uh, I think it's something that maybe needs to be looked at, maybe if, it, if you're in a firmware upgrade. But apart from that, really enjoyed using the unit uh, for the first go last night. Uh, we're still scanning. Uh, you can just see my laptop in the background there. It's uh, there we go. It's uh, it's still scanning tracks for um, for the next gig. So hopefully, I think it's got about a thousand or two thousand left to go. The next gig is on Friday night. Um, gonna give it a bash then, and again on Saturday, and um, we'll do another video and see what I think of the unit then. But for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to check out the website mobiledjnews.co.uk and uh, see you soon. Thank you for watching.